who's also of Earth Sky. And you might know Marcy's voice from our One Minute Night Sky videos, which you'll find in the sky category here on YouTube. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Debbie. How are you? I hope everybody has been enjoying some of our Earth Sky Minutes. Uh, I throw in uh, charts and explain what's going on in the night sky relative to the moon following planets and special occasions and bright stars. So people sure do seem to enjoy them. They're, they're really awesome and they're one minute long. So you get your little one minute dose of astronomy here on YouTube. So, so today, the Milky Way. So uh, Marcy, what is Milky Way? Well, the Milky Way, of course, is our home galaxy. It's a spiral galaxy. And of course, it, um, it's technically made up of like stars and gas and dust. And the Milky Way that people see in the sky, of course, we're looking at spiral arms of our galaxy. Uh-huh. And so, so the Milky Way is our own galaxy and, and our sun is inside the galaxy. Um, but it's also, and so people use the word galaxy for that, the Milky Way galaxy, but the Milky Way is also a band across the night sky, correct? Correct. Uh, it was probably named that by Greeks and Roman or whoever, you know, in the, in the, you know, ancient history of astronomy, because they thought it looked like kind of a, a milky a wave of, of milk across the sky. It, it does, it's kind of a creamy white up there, kind of a river of it across the sky. And of course, it wasn't until Galileo turned a telescope to the sky and looked at the Milky Way that we realized it was um, just a ton of stars that were so close together that blended together. So it's made of stars, gas, and dust. And so there's this river across the sky, and it just looks like a milky band. But then oh, it's thundering here. Can you hear that? Um, there's this milky band, but then if you turn some kind of optical aid on it, you can just see it explode into all these stars. And of course, the earliest stargazers didn't have that, but just an ordinary pair of binoculars will let you do that. Absolutely. You can, if you're out under some really dark skies, of course, just put binoculars and just follow down, you know, the band of the Milky Way across the sky. And You'll see all sorts of treasures, just tons of stars, uh, bright spots of glowing gases and star clusters. It, it's it's very rich, and that's why there's so much there. It just blends together as a glowing light. And so and so it's our home galaxy. So our sun that we see in our sky every day is one of how many how many stars are in the Milky Way? You know, they estimate it's between a hundred billion to four hundred billion stars make up our home galaxy. And that's a pretty wide estimate, right? And and so one of the reasons we don't know how many stars are in the Milky Way galaxy is that we can't get outside of it to look at it. We can only look at it from the inside. And there's like, so what's what's obscuring the view? There's like dust or what is it? Well, it depends on which direction you're looking. Sometimes you're looking towards the galactic center. And of course, that's such a rich area that you can only see so far. You can't see through the dust what's on the other side of, of it. You can't see the other side of the galaxy. And then sometimes uh, we're looking at intergalactic space, and that's the seasons where you don't see the Milky Way or much of the Milky Way. Okay. It just depends on which, which way you're looking. So the seasons, you mentioned the word season, and this is Milky Way season right now. We're in Milky Way season. So Milky it's Way starting. season... Yeah, it's starting. So it starts every year in the spring. And then, it, you know, most people consider it to go through uh, the late summer. That's if you're in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it starts in the fall and goes through the winter. So the same time of year, but different seasons on the two opposite hemispheres. So um, like what's happening there? What's making this Milky Way season? Why is it changing throughout the seasons? Well, it's, uh, you know, we're on a globe that rotates on its axis every day and, and everyone kind of notices different seasons for different stars and different constellations. Well, the same applies to the Milky Way. As we're rotating around, just sometimes you see the Milky Way and sometimes you don't. Right. And, so and we're going into the summer season where there's a lot of Milky Way showing. Right. And so it's like, it's almost like we're on a merry-go-round 
going around the sun and our night sky is just pointing out in this direction and then it's pointing out in this direction and then it's pointing out in this direction. And it's just, we're just getting this panorama of the whole galaxy. So what we're really seeing when we look at the Milky Way is we're looking at the edgewise view of the galaxy. And let's look at the first slide, please, and take a, take a look at that first. There we go. So this is an artist's view, right? So again, we can't get outside the Milky Way, but this is uh, an artist's view of, of what it might look like from the outside. Correct. Correct. And and you can see we're we're kind of halfway between the galactic center, the bright bulge there in the center and the outer edge. And we're also located between two spiral arms. Okay. So the spiral arms are what we see in the sky as Milky Ways. As and the so Milky the, Way. And so the spiral arms are those pinwheel looking shapes that we're seeing there. And those right. are, yeah, and those are those, we, we won't talk about those today, but those are very interesting in and of themselves, how those spiral arms form. But uh, just to say that we're not in the center of the galaxy, we're about two thirds of the way out from center. And that affects how we're seeing it in our night sky. Let's, let's go ahead and get the next slide because it's a good contrast to that first one. Yeah, so this is a this is an image from an Earth Sky community member, uh, Osama Fathi, and we want to thank him very much for uh, posting this to our community page. Um, this is the Milky Way galaxy as you might see it on a summer evening. And what are those streaks, Marcy? Those are are you, the. I'm not sure which, there's two streaks I'm kind of seeing. Those are probably star trails or meteors because this yeah. is a long exposure. I'm and then I'm... also you'll notice there's a big dark dust lane going down the Milky Way. And again, that's a lot of, of gas and dust that is just being backlit by the bright Milky Way behind it. So the spiral arms do contain bright stars, lots of stars, gas and dust. So those, those dark regions in the Milky Way are where stars are forming. And what I was Correct. looking at in that picture with those streaks were, I think some of those were meteors. And it's kind of a coincidence that at the same time of year that we're getting a good view of the Milky Way, we're also getting the summer meteor showers. And so that's a cool thing. And when you're out looking at the summer meteor showers, you can all, you've also got this awesome view of the Milky Way. So... Um, but yeah, it's the, it looks like a road or it looks like a, you know, a river, sometimes the ancients would call it, in the sky. And that's because we're looking, we're not looking at the galaxy from the top down anymore. Now we're looking, we're inside of it and we're looking at it edge on in our sky. Right. So right. the galaxy is flat like a pancake. It's round and it's flat and we're inside the pancake. And when we see that streak... We're, that's the edgewise view of it. And so, correct. Yeah. <laughs> Thunder. And so, the month of May is a really good time if you have a clear sky, which obviously I am not going to have that tonight. But uh, if you have a clear sky, the month of May is a great time to visualize yourself inside the galaxy. And why is that? In, in the month of May, uh, basically the Milky Way is lying flat around your horizon in the evening sky. So in order to even see Milky Way in May, you'd have to stay up a little late. You know, maybe closer to midnight, you can see some of it rising towards the eastern sky. So basically, we're just kind of looking at the plane of the galaxy. We're just overlooking it. And then as summer months go by, it will become more prominent and more overhead in your evening skies. Um, yeah, and somebody's saying, um, uh, oh no, never mind. Uh, the uh, somebody's asking about the the confusion about seeing that we're inside the Milky Way and it looks like a round disc, and we also see it edgewise. And that's that, yeah, that's hard. It's hard to flip your perspective in that way. But May, the month of May, is the best time to try to visualize it, and that's because of what Marcy just said that in the month of May you know, that flat part of the galaxy is lying, um, 
in about the same plane as the plane of your horizon. So if you think of yourself standing on the earth and you're looking out, say, imagine you've got a really clear, you're standing on a mountain or something and you can see in all directions. So if you looked on in every direction, you would see the flat plane of the Milky Way extending out around you. And, you know, if you just like were like a little kid and you were twirling in that, you know, like this, then you'd be twirling in the same plane that the galaxy is twirling. Or if you walked toward the Northeast in the evening right now, uh, you would be walking, you might be able to see a bright star coming up over the Northeastern horizon, and that would be the star Vega. And Vega is called the apex of the sun's way because our whole solar system moves in the direction of Vega. So if you want to visualize yourself in the Milky Way galaxy, May is a good time to do it. And again, the galaxy itself is in the same plane as the plane of your horizon. And if you look toward the Northeast, you're looking in the direction of our forward motion around the center of the galaxy. So all that is a lot of fun to do. So let's see. But that, but, but now, as Marcy said, now is not the best time to see the Milky Way. The best time to see the Milky Way is more like summer. And what do you, what is it that you're looking at when you're looking at the Milky Way at that time? So we said it's the edgewise view into the galaxy, but but what specifically are those stars? Well, when we're looking at the summer Milky Way, we're we're basically looking at that big river of stars in the sky. And right. it's it's bright because it contains so many stars and glowing gases and dust dust. And it's uh, since you're looking towards the galactic center where there's that's the most mass where a lot of stars, you know, are you're seeing kind of a conglomeration of the brightest part and the densest part of our galaxy. And so it's very prominent in the summer skies. Mm -hmm. And so one time I was uh, at one of the major star parties, there are these star parties that happen and many people have been to like a small star party, but there are some big star parties that happen every year too. And one of them happens in Texas, uh, which is where uh, I'm from. And so I was at the Texas star party and standing outside and somebody made a big sweep with his arm and said, that's a spiral arm looking at the Milky Way. Is that right? That's correct. And you can really see that in June and July evenings. Basically, if you look towards your, your northern northeast horizon, you would see it starting in like Cassiopeia and Perseus. And then it's going to arch up over the sky, going through Cygnus and on down through Aquila until it hits Sagittarius region. And it does. It, it just arcs across the entire sky. And it's very prominent on June and July evenings. Okay. And you're looking um, at a spiral arm. Right. So let's just let's flip down in slides and, and show uh, slide number seven. And just take we've only got a few more minutes here. So let's just take a minute to talk about that. Okay, uh, this chart shows you lying, uh, shows a person, a little person uh, lying on their back. This chart is by a, a UK astronomer named Guy Ottawell. And Marcy and I have been uh, working with Guy on uh, the latest reprinting of his book called Astronomical Companion. So that's been awesome and we're excited about that. And this is one of the charts in the book and, and Marcy added some arrows here where you can see the plane of the Milky Way going over this little guy's head. And so this is this is like summer, right, Marcy? Correct. This is your view from the, the summer evening sky. June, July, August, you're going to see the Milky Way quite high arching across the sky. OK, so, you know, from now till, say, you know, the end of August or even into early September, it's a great time to see the Milky Way. Um, you might see some meteors also. And, uh, you know, we invite you all to uh, come to earthsky.org and come to our Best Places to Stargaze page, which is a place where lots of people like you have uh, made recommendations on night sky locations all over uh, the U.S. and around the world where you can find a dark night sky. And um, so that's earthsky.org slash stargazing. 
and come on in there and check out a night sky and take a look at the summer Milky Way. We'll see you later.